Yeah. How they play the I game. Really I mean, see too much. what would what would sort of your overall guess be? I mean, in, in terms of generalizations in like game lengths, are we going to see quicker games? Are we going to see longer well, games? What do you reckon? Look at mid right now. Oh. DNZ. Easy. Dyer's Love it. Has been there we killed. go. Now say goodbye to your tango. I mean, Boom was sending out a stack there. How many did he actually bring to lane? That was, he was actually playing a bit risky there. He didn't actually take any out, went full stats, Boom. So he actually hasn't got any tangos for the lane because that's where He's obviously just down for a minute, uh, but definitely something that uh, Noob might be able to punish if he plays aggressive. Yeah, I'm, I'm really curious to see what teams and what our players are going to do in the mid matchup. Like how fast they're going to be rushing bottle on yeah. certain heroes because it's. It's, it's really back to how it used to be, where we're seeing a lot of these, like, two branches rush bottle on some heroes, and other times just get lots of stats, so... I mean, you're seeing... It's really cool to watch all this. Yeah, you're seeing this, so the strat here, Celery, he actually didn't buy any startup items. He bought a bottle for his mid, was trying to get it sent out, but DNZ still gets it. So, you know, he's, he's really asking for the help, mid Celery, he's buying him a whole bottle, uh, but it's not even going to make it out there, because DNZ's just sitting behind the towers. Oh, it, it, it's pretty devastating. So now Celery... They, 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 a lot of pressure uh, to boom. I mean, Boom, Boom's struggling. Of course, Celery on this top lane, he's got no, he's got nothing. He started with zero items. I mean, back in the I day, you get a report for this. There's <laughs> <laughs> no support, no items. I, it's, I really feel like I'm watching. It's like a blast too fast. Right? Yeah. Not only am I watching Funic, yeah, but I'm seeing a Night Stalker bounty, which used to be the old school style where you just go constant battling, especially nighttime, oh, yeah. around Vision. And then I'm seeing Spectre Warlock. Also, Spectre plays really nice to the vision for these type of heroes and they do these like very deep moves to get to the back line. So it's like a mix of strategies from like the past. And then we have a Snapfire just thrown into the midst of it all. So it's, I mean, this patch is going to be really exciting. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, how do you sort of rate the potential of, uh, of the mid Snapfire? I mean, uh, it's nearly getting the kill on Boom here, Boom. I mean, it's a fairy fire pot. He finally does have his courier coming back out. So he's got tangos. Uh, did actually also get Salve sent out. So we'll be able to stay in the lane, but not having a fun time at all. 13 for five against the four for one. This is uh, not the kind of start you expect when you go to mid as a co-op, right? You're picking this hero to, to win the lane. Yeah, absolutely. But this is, I think this is what level up wants to be doing in this type of game because they want to be getting a lead. Because if they start to fall too far behind in their draft, you know, you can just look at the way that Vikings heroes work. They're just going to be pushing lanes out, getting this big farm up on everything. So yeah. I want level up to do this and I want them to get a good head start. And I love that they did this with the bounty to start. The oh, DNC yeah, this heavy impact. Yeah, absolutely. Big move from DNZ. And uh, the other side of this didn't too much for him. In top lane, a bit of a slow start for the Night Stalker, but he's picking the farm back up. And, uh, of course, down the bottom lane, no struggle uh, whatsoever, really, from RDO on the Spectre. No, he should be fine. This is, like, the, this is, like, the beauty about picking Warlock always versus yeah, Darkseer. You awesome. don't have to worry about it, especially with a hero like Spectre. Yeah. Got Dispersion on top, too, and Warlock's got a lot of buffs. I'm curious to see how much we're going to see this hero. Yeah, I mean, what's what sort of the, the big change, you know, looking at any sort of the, 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 the talents or the shard? Or, you know, what, what, what's so strong about Warlock now, essentially? Well, it's the original abilities are really strong. You know, your middle bond and your shadow where always just have their innate power. Some people got a pretty interesting change. It's a little bit worse in some instances, but overall, yeah. it's going to be better as we get those levels out. And if you are able to get levels on your hero, we see these level 10 and 15 talents. These are the two that might start changing things and put more luck into it. him down here with these purifying flames but not quite enough with the two braces pretty tanky of course those braces also slightly buffed up a little bit extra hp regen on them now thanks to the new patch he's a beefy boy so funny it's going to be fine and he's also got a salve so braces out salve in and he's going to be able to, to stick around in the lane dnz able to pick up some xp once that goes on as well mid lane are we seeing anything get any better for boom he's not really no he's, st he's still lacking behind it yeah, he's at least gotten, he got to pick up like one of those well runes, which as we know last night was changed, was reduced to the only reason to the two slots of your bottle now. Yeah. The three shad top. Oh, uh, bring him very low here. Let's see if he's going to be able to get out. He will find it. Not quite able to find it. Another void. So shad's back. How's it, how are they doing for regen up here? Down to the last two tangos on him. Tangos on celery. So he's got a little mana if he wants to, to buff him up with the purifying flames. Yeah, DNC just I constantly on, on courier watch out in this top lane to really limit the resources that Viking can safely to get out. In fact, he wants to get in a good aggressive for the kill. And in they go. They're going to have a TP coming over to try and help out. And Aramis, he will be in. 
Good moment to try and turn things, but still Phoenix very tanky, and they're just low mana, and Shaft's just not in fighting position at the moment, so they would be able to stop Shaft from going down, but they won't be able to really punish DNZ or Phoenix. The one nice thing, at least from Aramis, is TP, sure, he doesn't get a kill, but he doesn't have to worry too much about Kezu bottom. You know, it's a dark seer, he'll just continue to be able to shove the lane in, he'll be able to get his farm, so this rotation, it sucks that you don't get a kill, but at least you're you're helping out your sick yeah. lane, so relieving a little bit of that pressure. Funnick, we've got that night time, so now he's got a lot more power to him, and as you said, you know, Southern, still pretty naked up there, pretty easy for them to wrap around on some DNZ nuggets. <laughs> Hold it onto that lot one tango, bless him. Yeah. I see yeah, the, the life of a support that's you know tried to help his mid with that with that bottle purchase. And there's the rotation, so he got the six, he's immediately going no hesitation. Sonic Wave comes out, we'll be able to take down DNZ in return. Uh, but of course, level up, able to get that first blood and getting that kill on Vikings carry. Perfect stuff. Like honestly, right now they're playing this early game. As, as best as they can. You know, Spectre's free farming, Snapfire crushed the mid lane because of the small bounty moves. These small bounty moves have kind of just caused this massive effect in these last six minutes. The top and mid lane are heavily in favor now for this level upside. The Night Stalker, you know, your early game, you know, you get these last two, you're not supposed to lose the fight fresh. Oh, DNZ, DNZ looking pretty dead here. In service to the realm. I should say, yeah, this, this bottom lane, Audio getting all the space that he wants, and, you know, Spectre is it still very much a hero, and when you look at it in this game, that if this goes late, if Spectre goes completely unharmed in, in sort of progress for the first few items, the, the Spectre as a hero is just going to be able to naturally Magic. carry, out-carry heroes like the Wraith King. Yeah, Spectre will be doing good. The only thing is, there is a Kenzu Darkseer. So okay. Darkseer has a lot of cool things True. now. Wall of Replica might be the same, but also, dude, normal punch, man. Normal punch got ball. There's chances we can see it. And Darkseer overall, he's king of teams. We've said it for a long time. He's gotten even more so with the Aghanim. Oh, top lane. Lane. Yeah. That's another death. I mean, he's coming in with these top tier rotations two times at the top. And both times getting the kill done. Now, this mid snap fire, of course, brilliant start in the lane uh, with, with how he's able to play the matchup against the, this quap. And now, with these movements, he's really making the magic happen. We'll see what sort of build noob goes for. Do you still imagine it is going to be like the Aghanim's rush on the mid snap? No, it's not as good. It's not as good. Okay. good. I think he played it to a possibility. Uh, there's a problem with the shard now, too, as LeBron. The shard actually has insane potential with damage, too. With E Blade, it's actually ridiculous once you get like the talents all built in and everything, too. That's a lot of damage, yeah. So he was it. Yeah. And it's not. Look at this. This is this aggression. They've got to bring TPs in, and they do. Three extra TPs yeah. starting to go over there to stop Bardio from sticking around and going for the kill. They've got to pretend they're Wraith King. They're already dying twice in this laning stage. A uh, third death could be incredibly brutal for them. It's RDO, he does the quick play though. Oh, the DNC! He gets one courier, and they're not looking, he gets the second. Aramis doesn't take his off a different, you know, down a different route, lets it pass by. Two, two more couriers for DNC. How many is that so far? At least five. four. At least, yeah, pro, mate, I think you're right, five. He took one up top. Yeah, for five couriers minimum. Uh, so far in the first eight minutes by DNC, this bounty has to pick doing a lot. Now he's even going towards bottom for RDO. The oh, Iron Shells are starting to build up. Starting to put some fresh They've flipped the wave. They're they getting aggressive. I don't know if they've got the damage to take down RDO. They're really committing for it. They've got the bunch here. TP's coming in. Shots out. Are you still alive? Jump back to the TP. He's going to live the shot. Just in the Sonic Wave does finish him off. So Boom at least able to pick up the kill. Uh, but having to use a lot to, to get it done. And Viking, they do lose two of their heroes for that effort. Level up did rotate. All five down there. So now at least, you know, Shad gets some breathing room. He's able to farm up top. Boom did have to use the Sonic Wave just to finish that kill off, but at least they got it. Yeah. They, I mean, they did, if they didn't get that Spectre there, that would have massively hurt them. Oh, no. nice. oh he's able to race to the ruin, and now he oh, might run this down. It's some trouble. Uh, still a good bit of time left for the night time. Noob's going to come across as well, get involved with the kill. Does he want to take it? Yes, he does. Radiance Middle Tower is under Eddie attack. Eddie Bison goes. He does. He's going to be rushing yeah. that. He played as we kind of figured he would. They're going to get on top of it. We're going to over. Down for the tag team. Hey, yeah, that's just enough to take him out. So, boy, and they get the kill. Well, by the way, also played a little bit of Tusk. Also been seeing people play Tusk. Hero still feels kind of the same. I'll be totally honest with you. He's extremely strong. It got one nerfed a little bit on the numbers, right? 
slight nerfs on slight. Them. Honestly, are yeah. they nerfs? Because they might just make you not overextend now. <laughs> sure. Like, okay, but <laughs> there was like some nerfs, but it, the punch got off too with the way the animation goes. So there's, it, it still feels. That's really true. That's middle it's, tower. It's, it's, it's really good. Attack. And with that in mind, like, it was like the level 10 talent. So are you taking that for that additional bit of stun on the punch? Yeah, I think you still do. It's, it's, it's just still so, so nice to set up versus like EKBs later on if they do have them and just be able to chase them or snowball. And we're seeing Kezu. So we've been we saw a little bit of talks about this. I saw some people tweeting about it. It's Dominator's back on the menu oh. for Dark Sears. Okay. So I'm trying to get their farm up. I think it's like Dominator Ags most games and then you can start deviating a little bit unless you feel like you need Greaves. It's, 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 just, it's so insane. Like everyone just gets so, two heroes just get so tanky inside the fights. It really changes the whole dynamic of everything. As we're seeing this gold start to even out now for Viking. Although they were under a little bit of pressure from the laning start from these slice of couriers, they've caught back. That's, that's what their heroes do. They farm really well. Four heroes down bottom with the kill body on. TP backup coming in from that road up time. With the cookie but touch, you're not going to leave over the whole damage. The third of connection dropping down to counting offering. Out comes the snap hole as well, finds straight over the ward. The Oracle takes that, so the arrows go for the TP out, but the damage from Noob's enough. Double kill for level up. As Viking, they, they really bring all the efforts into to try and get that kill on the Spectre, but level up, again, just a hop with the reaction. Ready to turn up and take the fight any time the Viking tries to bring it to them. Damn, yeah, level up's just... The way that their lanes have come out, they can still take these fights. And Chad, he still needs time to win so yeah. Every time that they're doing this, they're bringing the five. They don't quite have track yet, now they do. So now it's going to be a little bit more worrisome. If Viking does make these plays, they have to be very certain they're going to actually get these kills or just be able to push a tower or something. They don't want to be giving up too many to track. So that yeah. will start to build up very quickly. And DNZ, he's actually going to have a Veil finished on this Bounty Hunter. Not your most okay. traditional build, but it's going to amplify quite a decent amount. Your Fatal Bonds, your yeah. Snapfire to give them quite a little bit more damage which maybe they can be lacking in some instances like if they don't have snap fire there they could lack damage so this is neat i did get some nice Radiant little buffs button. across the board yeah. 729 like cast range. mana regenerator is up it's a cast range up by 200 quite a sizable Radiant amount and you can get cooldown now fortified. as low as 22 seconds incredibly Radiant low cooldown now so on this yeah. item Second duration, yeah. Look at the insane. He spotted where Shad was, so he puts himself in position to get ready for his. Career. Oh, he's and getting another one. Oh, and that, that one hurts. Probably the well, the, the mid lane ones did hurt quite a bit, but now at this stage of the game, Kerr is down for nearly two minutes, and you're out the out the out of action. I mean, you're out of action, right? You Shad, two minutes. He's not turning up to any fight. Hi, right, DNZ is absolutely the MVP right now, just with these little moves. Just sniping some couriers has done all the damage. And I'm just watching these other couriers. Look, he has another, he has another deep ward. He's just he knows. These, couriers yeah. come. these two couriers that are down here, there's a high chance they get. I mean, it's, get up, it's, it's when, when you're playing against a bounty that's Radiant's doing this right, it, it just gets in your head, right, as a player, because you've got to constantly. If that's something else you have to be thinking about, every time you're trying to get an item out, you, you've got to have, you've got to be thinking about DNZ, because uh, he's thinking about you. Especially when you're playing with like the Queen of Pain, a hero that really relies on item timings, what if he oh, yeah. loses his orchid? <laughs> like, stuff like this can be really devastating. So DNZ doing a great job. Like they're they're coming out. I wonder if we get any of these ones coming out now. Any, any big deliveries? Oh, he's heading away from them, but it would have been nice. Under attack. That's huge. That's, that's the thing. So that's pretty good. Radiant's middle tower of that. has fallen. No. I mean, if DNC keeps this up, I mean, it's first first game of the tour for, of the league. Uh, but uh, I think definitely something that's going to be on their team's radars, playing against Level Up, uh, having the Bounty Hunter in mind, as uh, creating a huge look. nuisance. He's going to get quite a few here on the way back if he sticks around. Boom got his well, orchid delivered at the very least. Okay. But he's going to get one of them. They're going to kill him for this. They've had enough of it. They've had enough of DNC. They'll, they'll manage to punish him for that. But well, it's an interesting uh, use of his time too, because right, all this is daytime, and they have a night stalker. So the fact that he's space. pulling them away from their side, of the map, just all the way back to this entrance of their of their base, it's huge. I mean, yeah, look, 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 look at the heat map. Stuff. You know, you'd think he's a, a dire hero. You know, he, he's barely stepped foot over his side of the map, just completely deep on enemy lines, doing a, a fantastic job at the courage sniping. And it, that extra bit of gold for the team, right? These courage kills that adds up. You know, you're. you're did you look at the Spectre's farm? You know, are you already having a pretty good time in the lane? Zero, one, and four. You know, it's just great early game KDA. And he's well on track to it's getting a good time on the Manta after the play. So this Spectre definitely a, an issue. Sure, it's still seven to six, less than one K, but Vikings got to be a little, uh, a little scared of the progression of the Spectre in comparison to what they've been able to achieve so far in Shad. Yeah, they still have 
they still have an immensely powerful team. Like, once they start grouping up together and they get to take their fights Radiant on their account, scanning. they're going to be able to crush these fights pretty well. As long as the Warlock yeah. doesn't get, like, a godly rock and fatal buns, you look at the Viking Drake, Bounty. there's so much burst to control his darks here. He always just gets everything to come together. So, and he's got mech, so that's going to counteract a lot of the damage there. There could be some issues with, with level up. There's not a good snap bolt, as we were saying earlier. There could be some, this, you know, they have to get to the back line. Radiant this is smart Radiant stuff from level up. They scan out, they, uh, they scan out Viking, and now they themselves are making the smoke move because they know exactly where Viking is. Funnick's going to lead it with the night time. struggling to make a play against them i mean that was that was picture perfect that was such a beautiful initiation and viking if they're able to get their spells off they have strong team fight they couldn't get anything off like kenzu as well as the toss air mystery got really good goals for funnings i'm gonna try and lead in here jumping in with the snowball as well committing on to new but he's gone straight to the side he needs help is he gonna get it so he tries to save him but there's no false promises he's gonna call out after the last fight time but viking they try and immediately get back and get aggressive on to level up, but level up were more than prepared for that. Now they will suffer. Night Stalker, it's, I feel like this hero, if you're able to get away with your lanes like this, he feels so powerful, so potent. Especially if you have a vision element, like a bounty or your specter, he can always just pick and choose his targets. He's getting these crippling fears on heroes like Queen of Pain. That's so, it's devastating. Like you're just you're screwed. If you get hit by that, you can't do anything inside of these fights. Funic, 307, yeah. doing an excellent job. 5k gold lead now already. I mean, just yeah, the, those two moves. Kills. Yeah, huge stuff. Uh, you can never underestimate the amount of money that, that DNC is going to be bringing in. And, and talking about the bounty answer, I mean, the, the shard, right, it's got to be on the menu, right? Surely this is an instant 20 minute buy. This shard seems incredible. Yeah, I think so. It, 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 it does too much. It, it really, it, the fact that you get damage reduction as well is pretty crazy. 40% damage reduction on a spell that you can keep up. Making the move here on to Kezu. Kezu is tanky. Is he tanky enough? Well, with the snap foil coming out, they've got it. More money as well with DNZ coming in for the cleanup. And that's going to be the mech now done. The mech. So now he has a mech to counteract Kezu's. Uh, Kezu now, after these last few moments, uh, his farm is completely stopped. He's been sitting around the 7,000 mark for the last like, three, four minutes. He was really farmed, but now it's really stopped his level up. All this downtime, too. They took two fights now, with Haunt, and now Haunt's back up in about 20 seconds. So Viking, they still just kind of have to play the farm game. Like, Shad needs a lot more time to catch up, and boom. It feels like he just needs a BKB now to play into this night. The roller coach, they put health problems, and then, all right, we're good. Uh, temporary health problems, apparently, we're good. I, I hope they got, I mean, they must be good. That was a uh, very quickly resolved. Must have some excellent doctors over there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here we go, back up. Oh, the Philly. Oh, Philly for level up. Warlock with the Philly. I mean, hey, why did that get buff up? <laughs> I don't think it already was enough. I don't think anyone was ever upset to ever find a Philosopher's Stone. And they were like, wow, we get buff. And he's a buff. ATGPM. There we go. Radiance top tower. I mean, that really does feel like an item that if if the enemy gets it and your team doesn't, it, it feels very bad, right? It's on like the, you know, the spell prism level. Yeah. If you don't get that, you're sad. As Aramis means stop. Pretty dead, still tough, fairly tanky. He is. Oh, and he's gone back up. And he's gonna be fine. Tries to turn up to DNZ. Yeah, let's be careful. You're never sure it can bounce to end his life. So they're gonna have to itemize to just make this Wraith King an absolute beast. So I'm seeing Aramis, he's gotta be going for this Solar Crest build. Love this item now. The build up feels really nice. Highly advised. A lot of this one up. I mean, yes, yeah, so Kazu, he's just going full. He's just going mech pipe. So he's, gonna, he's not going to have an active this game for a very long time, which does hurt a bit. I mean, it's, it's a solar crest. It, it, it's got to be one of those items that's in the territory of. You, you're going to see it every game. Why not? Right? So, too. It's just someone's building a solar crest. You're never mad about a casual 
still win this, and then whatever, he just goes like this little bit of third pleasure to finish it off. It's not like yeah, really so beneficial for your carries. It's not a rush. They'll make the way to the real life. Every single world available. I'm feeling really strong here. They've got Shadow Wing to keep themselves sustained. Yeah. Max Fatal on, too. There's too much, there's really just too much chaos and information that's not going to come up with so far with this lead. And bam, now RDO, he yeah, has an Aegis. Yeah, he's massive, I'm a great game on the Spectre. And uh, so, so, so going for the Agonims, um, it's going to be the build up today. Uh, no changes, of course, right? Still the same axe as we had before uh, in a patch where well, no one was really playing Spectre. Of course, we did see some excellent games from it on the Major. Came in in that final game from IG in there. A brilliant time was had with it. this at all as you said it is it just seems like there is no point trying to do anything until boom has his bkb there he's just gonna die every time yeah boom no bkb no radiant chat it, it really does feel like it's impossible for them to fight they just they just keep getting caught and it, it hurts even more because it's the bounty so these tracks sure so small you no know, he's only that level one bounty it adds up very quickly as he's almost level 12 too now they've got even bkb for funnick so he can even be more confident into the front lines this is ah, starting to get a little bit out of hand here for viking yeah, and you, I, I, in this sort of game as well, I, the, the shadow step's going to be very nice, right, when you have such aggressive heroes hunting for action, right? You've got DNZ Dyer's and Funic, these two heroes, they're going to be hunting out potential kills for you to quickly jump over and get involved in. Yeah, I think it just because he can, like, he can use this to just instantly kill the Oracle in every single one of the fights, and then just jump back and then use his hunt to kill anything else. It's, it's going to be pretty cool. I, I don't know if it's... I, I'm not sure how big of an item this is right now but oh, actually, it's because he's in such a lead you can go for it. Well, it, 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 it my bad it did get changed right because it, it didn't used to cast a dagger on the target right that's new from when though because that wasn't the last patch oh okay that, okay okay so that was previous okay because i remember initially when it was added right it, it definitely initially didn't have the dagger happen, it was yeah. just a jump okay no with the dagger all right that's yeah that's that's a very very nice that's a lot of damage a couple of those on, as you say if you jump and stutter at the back lines especially if uh if funny's already on top of him with the silence he's he's dead every time at the start of the fight yeah absolutely he'll die he'll die right away they're, biking, they're, they're looking for smokes because they want to be one step before the start of the fight now that the ults are also down on the side of level up sure. it, it really feels like they're not able to be the ones who start the fight just because of that vision advantage and Level up is playing so well with this. Look at DNZ, he's just backing his home. He's back, back he's ready for Karius. Oh, that's oh, that's an Ochre Club. He's not getting that, is he? He's got vision on it? No, oh, he hasn't okay, got yeah. vision. Wait, he's gonna, he's, he's gonna come down at an angle that he's gonna be able to get in on that. Look at this, he's, he's in their heads. He's gonna get right. it. There we go, yeah. slowing down the progression of Shabby even more. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of minutes. As uh, over in the river, what have we got in, dude? We have a Kezu, the rest of the team sweeping across. He's got to run. There's an E-Blade in, he's been tracked, Surge is about to come to an end. So they're going to have to get into the he's coming away, jumping in over towards the Celerina, on top of the Oracle, Oracle goes down, Shad's trying to focus towards DNZ, and by that will come out from Celery. See if they uh, back off for now here, level up. If you give a bit of yeah, respect here to the buyback from Oracle. That was a shadow step. Yeah. still had about 10 seconds left on Hunt, so I guess, you know, the re another reason why he wants this is that he can just join all the fights every time. Oh, He's yeah. on the opposite yeah. side of the map. He doesn't have to wait for the frequency and the long duration of Hunt. He can always just jump in with the Night Stalker and Bounty. He gets involved in a track kill as well. Actually, no, this seems uh, even better because of the track. Yeah, and I'm just saying now, actually, there, there was a change for Simple Dino. The, the cooldown did get reduced, so down to 30 seconds. Oh, that so, yeah, and that's a sizable amount. Already was relatively low, but 30 seconds cooldown. No, that's 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 very much seeing especially in a game like i think when you're ahead right if you're behind on spectre yeah. i mean to be fair if you're behind on spectre not a lot of items are going to feel good but this isn't this is something that you buy to to continue to overwhelm the enemy yeah, it feels good uh, it, fe it feels really good especially I, I, versus like these saves versus like oracles your warlocks your, exactly you know, yeah. like venge let's throw that in it's always going to yeah. feel nice to have an extra element to get into the back line so yeah definitely got to work Vikings, they've got good wards up on this left side here there's all the ults available for level up, though. They don't have night time just yet. Funix still has about 30 seconds left on his Dark Ascension, but they're ready. They have everything else, so they want to bring the fight. And they have good vision still. Look at this. They have this high ground ward that wasn't taking out. They have full vision of Viking right now. Radiant's top tower is under attack. 
Uh oh. Could be quite an explosion. There, there. How could the BKD on? He's getting going on. He will get surged and mounted up to the side here. Argyle continuing to try and chase. Vikings lineup, it, it's such a hard game to come back into. They, they're just all over you every fight. It, it, exactly that. They're going to be able to do it and I'll more. It's like this deep vision that they've had pretty much the entire game. Be yep. able to snipe couriers, feed them, get onto these important heroes. Like they had full vision because of this one of the entire Viking lineup. Every spell got used almost perfectly from level up. Who had to use a sonic wave to finish off the warlock who had already casted everything. So you can already feel Viking in a pretty desperate spot just to get any type of kills and returns and yeah, level up just looking great. And I love the little plays they're doing too. Like RDO, he just got reclaimed. He base jumped back in the game. opportunity for Viking at all to really get like a vacuum combo with anything it feels like it's just them getting completely collapsed upon unable to get any form of initiation. Jump again. Absolutely, it's been the best, best fight the Vikings managed to get going for them so far this game. I was just saying, I had not seen the back be able to get cast. They, they did not, they did not respect the tankiness of Kenzu. They were able to get a combo up. Now Viking able to get some breathing. Chad finds himself with a nice illusion with his radiance too. Can push the lanes in. Now they could actually get maybe some snowball kills here if level up isn't careful. They'll start to lose more. Radiance top tower is under attack. Some wine out done on Shad, so I'll be a little little tankier in these fights now. Pretty susceptible to everything, just the ghost set to pick up on him. We're seeing, I mean, is Philly, is Philly paying off? Philly's paying off. Look at LeBron, four step, Aetherland, going for Shard next, which got, has gotten buffed. We don't know about the Shard. Feels pretty decent now. It's very good. with the shadow word yep. uh, I imagine well I guess at 20 you still want the golem right yes the golem yeah. is still too good and even the 15 talent is a little bit debatable I guess it, it depends right if you feel it's a game where you're getting off long upheavals yeah it, yeah. it does a lot I mean it, it can do a lot of damage yeah. you know if you get the full channel people get stuck in it if, if you get stuck in it you're stuck in it people can this so it's it can be pretty strong all depends on how he's going to be thinking he's going to be playing the fights too. I see, I see him putting three points in on people. That's why I'm yeah. kind of leaning toward that. But we'll see. If they've, they're making another move. They've got everything but haunt available. But he's got shadow step, so he can always join. Still looking to be aggressive. It's rushing up. There we go. And shot available, of course, on this road. Shot. Oh, Shot's going to Uh, 
Yeah, they're gonna let DNZ take it. They're gonna let DNZ take it. Okay. Right. I mean, it, it is great. Is it is great. Really yeah. yeah. I mean, it's easy. It's <laughs> medallion fail and 40% reduction while in You can't kill it. I mean, maybe. But I, did, I wouldn't be surprised. We'll see. I'm ready for some sort of OS Frog moments where he's literally unkillable. 40% damage reduction. I forgot about the damage reduction yesterday. I played for some bounty. I used you're like, several why did I kill it? I was like, wow. <laughs> I just... I <laughs> 40%. I mean, you got to watch out. Yeah, these straight damage reductions on the, you know, every single damage type. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot. It's armor, magic, resistance, everything. All rolled into one lovely big old percentage. Yep, then we see LeBron. He's also got his finish stuff, too. He bought the shard notes as well. Uh, Noob, he's got BKB, Blake, and Ethereal Blade. I actually really like that he went to Blake with this build. I think it's really nice with the shard. You can position yourself for those stuns. Oh, for the pushes. And... Point blank yeah. Range. Exactly. Because otherwise, you don't get it. It's a two-second stun. If you get it. <laughs> phase against this team you know we, there have been in the past teams that do warrant an early bounty on ban and uh, level up making a very good case to be one of those when you're drafting against them yeah i and i mean the, the draft is honestly really clever like the warlock specter you know this is a duo try to old school the world, the age is amazing super popular back in the days once you get the ball rolling it's really tough to stop it because it's like yeah. they just provide so much so many vision elements and so many different ways of initiation and yeah they've, they've done an excellent job i love funix build no funny business nothing greedy. just more of corrosion bkb blink he knows his job get immune get on top of the lead get on top of the back line it's been great stuff from everybody on this team yeah, I and mean, it really does feel like that they they have embraced the new patch uh, a little bit more, well, quite a lot bit more than Vikings lineup. You know, Vikings lineup. You know, this is what Viking would have drafted a couple of patches. Ago, you know, this is they, they don't really change anything up too much. And and level up was they may also have gone for a similar route in the previous patch because this is very much what they enjoy playing. Uh, definitely seems to to, to to be a lineup that does work a little better thanks to some of the smaller changes. Yeah. And just, I mean, the bounty, the bounty effect really has devastated, I think, because Noob is, Noob is so enabled this game, right? The, the snap fire is absolutely owning, and that's yeah, really because of how well all the things in the it's, mid has gone. Yeah, I feel like from the things that they're running this game, the, the, the mid snap is, that's definitely one of the components that you will see other teams doing. I mean, already, of course, other teams were doing the mid snap, but you're going to see a lot more of it this patch. Yeah, it, it, it got nerfed, right? Like, it got immensely nerfed, and the Aghanims got changed to scale with your ultimate, and now we're still seeing, like, the possibility. You know, Shark got the, buffed, yeah, the Dira Blade still the build, and there's still, like, a lot of different things. You you're a knight, It's man. really strong team fighter, especially if you're able to get advantage in the lane. Yeah, he did. Just able to get so much. And Noob, he's got special strength. He loves his, like, his Lina's, his Snapfire. He's a lot of... He's a big... Star. He's a big star. Back on with the pushes, Viking, they're still trying to give it their best shot here, bringing the fights to level up. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. It's tough for them to get this solid initiation with them. How do they get the
one triple kill for Audios. And uh, I, I imagine that those G, G keys are looking pretty appealing right now here for Viking. There's still towers, so they'll fight on maybe. But this, it, it's tough. Level up You know what? Yeah. Oh, this is a, this is a pretty good way to play my ground, I'm not gonna lie. Shadow walk and run in. 40% reduction. Did you see that he almost didn't die at the end there? Like, they used it. took so long to die. Any that is pretty crazy. He set a team up for everything, right? Like, that was my game with a full high ground advantage. DNC completely breaks the whole high ground. just from the first series, especially considering this is a game against the team that was knocked down from the upper division. Slight changes, and the roster of what changes that were already in effect in last season. Uh, so you're going to be feeling pretty good after this first game if you're level up. Yeah. It just, it's, it's how cleanly they've played. Like, it's, it's just been everything. All the elements, the NZ's division aspect, the way that they've controlled the fights, the way that they, their target priority too, they're always getting on top of Celery. It's been really solid. Like Viking, they're just a champ. Like the, the one or two situations where you felt like they might have a chance of coming back like way long ago when they were on the Radiant high ground and Funic just ran in over the high ground, that broke Viking. Like that's, that felt like that was their chance to come back and it just didn't happen at all because of Level Up's understanding of how to approach the fights. And so, yeah, it's been great. Now they just have full control. Now they're getting the fun items online. Data list for Noob, queuing up his mechanic, get some time for Relic. Oh, that's, he was, I guess he's taking that with a spell damage build. No, no, he's sending it back. Who's he giving that one over to? We'll see. Someone's going to want to try to grab the, Oh, and they got an illusionist oh, cape for Spectre. Oh, that's the dream one for Ardio. That's a lovely one. He's quite... He's got a lot of large. Oh, spell and prism. Oh, and there we go. Oh, getting the dream. I mean, like, the, those three are already the top tier ones. Any of those items get any change in 7.29? Spell prism got nerfed. Okay. Oh, why is it? Still I was going to say, who, I don't think anyone's ever cared about the stats when they get that item. It's just a cooldown reduction play, so that's the one that we got inside. Getting what five, six, something, seven couriers early game, taking out the bottle so that his snapfire 